Thank you for joining me in part two of this two-part series on understanding cancer. It's important to realize that even if you avoid all the known carcinogens, it's impossible to avoid damage to your DNA. Just normal metabolism, the way that our bodies generate energy, damages your DNA on a daily basis, and there's no avoiding this. So it's important to keep the defense mechanisms for repairing this damage, eliminating damaged cells, working at their best. So another defense mechanism that your cells do in order to protect themselves from cancer-causing mutations is they sacrifice themselves. They self-destruct for the greater good of the organism. This is referred to as apoptosis, which literally means programmed cell death. This is a genetically defined program. Now I'm going to explain to you what this means. There are certain genes inside of your cells that have the ability of detecting damaged DNA. And when they detect this damaged DNA that is unable to be repaired, they immediately activate apoptosis. Now these genes are often referred to as tumor suppressor genes. And that's because they suppress the formation of cancer cells. Now, tumor suppressor genes are a fantastic defense mechanism, but there is one problem. If you get damage in that part of the gene that contains the tumor suppressor gene, if this happens, what can end up happening is you get a mutation in that tumor suppressor gene, which now disrupts the ability and function of that gene to detect damaged DNA. And ultimately, this can rapidly lead to cancer because these tumor suppressor genes are very, very important in the defense mechanisms that our bodies have against cancer. So you may be asking yourself, well, what determines whether a mutation forms in a tumor suppressor gene versus any other of the thousands of genes that make up your DNA? And the answer is simple. It's random. Yes, that means that damage to your DNA happens at random places. And there's thousands of different places that this DNA damage can occur. So you, the more DNA damage that occurs, the more likely you're going to get it in a gene that is a tumor suppressor gene. So it often takes several decades before you actually get a mutation in a tumor suppressor gene. And this is part of the reason why cancer is often a very age-related disease. Now here is where your diet comes in. The cruciferous family of vegetables, which include broccoli, kale, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, etc. This family of vegetables contains organic compounds in it that are able to increase the expression of these tumor suppressor genes so that these tumor suppressor genes can now have a better ability to detect damaged cells and kill them before they are able to cause cancer-causing mutations. Now these organic compounds are called sulforaphanes and isothiocyanates. Not only can these sulforaphanes and isothiocyanates detect precancerous cells and prevent them from forming mutations, but they can also kill cells that have already formed cancer. Studies have shown that sulforaphanes and isothiocyanates are effective at killing cancer cells. So, important question, are you eating a cruciferous vegetable on a daily basis? If the answer is no, you may want to rethink your diet. So now that you understand some of the basics on what causes cancer and how your diet plays a very important role in preventing it, you should be thinking about how you're going to increase the consumption of dark green leafy vegetables and also these cruciferous family of vegetables on a daily basis. I've found that in my life, the most effective way of delivering all these different micronutrients and organic compounds to myself on a daily basis has been by using a Vitamix, which is a very powerful blender that I found very convenient to rapidly ground up all these different fruits and vegetables, and it's very easy to clean up. And so I highly recommend using the Vitamix as a very effective and efficient way of delivering these very important vitamins and minerals and organic compounds to you, yourself and also your loved ones on a daily basis. I hope that you've enjoyed learning some of the basics of understanding cancer and how your diet does play a very important role in preventing it. Thank you for joining me in this two-part series.